What a lovely day, and we're good to be back. And here is Asia News for today. China ready to join India and other countries for the COVID-19 conference. The Chinese Foreign Ministry says that China is open to India and other South Asian countries participating in a virtual conference on fighting COVID-19. This meeting is the extension of joint efforts by China and relevant South Asian countries to combat the pandemic and revive social and economic development, and is an intrinsic component of international and regional cooperation in the fight against the pandemic. According to the statement from Foreign Ministry spokesman, the foreign ministers of China, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Nepal, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh will meet via video link to exchange views on fighting the pandemic. The meeting is part of China's cooperation with South Asia countries and China is open to participation by other countries in the region. Wang says when asked by reporters at a regular briefing about why India was not on the list of attendees. Leaders of ASEAN hold a discussion with the chair of the junta of the Myanmar crisis. Leaders and representatives from the ASEAN hold a meeting in Jakarta to discuss the situation in Myanmar following the coup in February. Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin calls on Myanmar to end killings and end violence and he hopes Myanmar will consider Malaysia's proposal to release political detainees promptly and unconditionally. ASEAN officials and diplomats have also worked on initiative to send a humanitarian aid mission to Myanmar, appoint a new envoy to encourage dialogue between the junta, the ousted lawmakers and armed ethnic groups who have formed an opposition national unity government. The gathering in Jakarta is the first coordinated international effort to ease the crisis in Myanmar. Myanmar is part of the 10-nation ASEAN. ASEAN leaders called for a constructive dialogue on the Myanmar situation. Leaders of the ASEAN countries reached five-point consensus on the situation in Myanmar, calling for constructive dialogue among all parties concerned. According to the chairman's statement issues, after an in-person leaders' meeting held in Jakarta, ASEAN leaders closed discussion on the recent developments in Myanmar and expressed deep concern on the situation in the country. A five-point consensus attached to the statement says there shall be immediate cessation of violence in Myanmar and all parties shall exercise utmost restraint. According to the consensus, constructive dialogue among all parties concerned shall commence to seek peaceful solution in the interest of the people. In addition, ASEAN will also provide humanitarian aid through the ASEAN Coordinating Center for Humanitarian Assistance on Disaster Management. The meeting is participated by leaders of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, and Myanmar's Commander-in-Chief Defense Services and Chair of the country's newly formed State Administration Council, Senior General Ming Oling. Around 4,400 police personnel deploy at 51 points across the Indonesian capital to ensure security. ASEAN founded in 1967, the country that became involved in ASEAN is Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Myanmar, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Jokowi sends his condolences to the family of the submarine crew sank. TNI Angkatan Laut telah menaikkan status KRI Nangga. Indonesian President Joko Widodo offers condolences to the families of the 53 crew members who were on board a submarine which has sunk in the Bali Sea. The 44-year-old KRI Nanggala 402 lost contact as it prepared to conduct a torpedo drill. Search team says they find objects including prayer mat fragments and a bottle of periscope lubricant near the submarine's last known location, leading the Navy to believe the vessel had cracked.
In addition, Navy Chief of Staff Yudo Margono says that a sonar can have detected a submarine-like object at 850 meters beyond the Nangalas diving range. More than a dozen helicopters and ships are searching the area where contact was lost, with the United States, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia and India providing assistance. Southeast Asia's most populous country has sought to revamp its military capability, yet some equipment still old, and there have been fatal accidents in recent years. Indonesia had five submarines before the latest accidents, two German-built Type 209s including Angala and three newer South Korean vessels. Citizen sympathy family of submarine crew arch Indonesia to improve military technology. Local residents at the port town of Banyuwangi in Indonesia's eastern region of Java Island offer their condolences to the crew of the missing submarine, urging the government to advance its military technology. The Navy says search team finds debris floating around the vessel's last known location, but the supply of oxygen was expected to have run out early. Rescuers sent over dozen search helicopters and ships to the area where contact was lost, with the United States, Australia, Singapore, Malaysia and India providing assistance. Experts say it is likely the submarine was crushed by the water pressure. Indonesia operates five submarines, two German-built Type 209s including Nangala and three newer South Korean vessels. It has been seeking to modernize its defense capabilities, but some of its equipment is old and there have been fatal accidents in recent years. Australian and New Zealand Embassy in Thailand commemorates Anzac Day amid virus outbreak. Australia and New Zealand embassies in Thailand mark Anzac Day with a scaled-down ceremony amid the third coronavirus outbreak in the Southeast Asian nation. The event in Thailand usually holds in Kanchanburi province every year with a dawn service at the Hellfire Pass followed by a commemorative service at the War Cemetery. The event was cancelled last year due to the first outbreak in Thailand, while this year the event is limited to only four officials laying rats at the Australian embassy in Bangkok. The public are advised to observe the ceremony on social media. Anzac Day originally commemorated a bloody battle on the Gallipoli Peninsula in Turkey during the First World War on April 25, 1915. Thousands of troops from the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps were among a larger Allied force that landed on the narrow beaches of the Gallipoli Peninsula in an ill-fated campaign that would claim more than 130,000 lives. Today, Anzac Day honors all troops from all conflicts. Thailand reports 2,438 new coronavirus cases and 11 new deaths, bringing the total number of infections to 55,460 and fatalities to 140 since the pandemic started last year. The Philippines healthcare system under tension after COVID-19 cases escalated in the country. The Philippines healthcare system is training under the escalating pressure from soaring COVID-19 cases, which have left hospitals in the capital Manila overwhelmed by the influx of severely ill patients. According to the Ministry of Health says, the country reports 9,661 COVID-19 cases, raising the nationwide tally to 989,380 cases, including a death toll of 16,674. Waiting outside emergency rooms for hours, some even for days. Dozens of urns are lined up at the crematorium of Manila North Cemetery. Patients dying of COVID-19 need to be cremated immediately. Daphne Bautista does not satisfy the worn-out healthcare system because her mother succumbed to COVID-19 after failing to get help from across five hospitals because they had already exceeded capacity. Cases 
So, pero yun nga po. They put my mother on a stretcher because the emergency room was so packed. My mom was placed in the corridor and there were dead bodies there. Tadaanan mo rin yung mga patay doon. Tabi-tabi. The cemetery administrator says the virus is steering through families, as cremating whole families is becoming a common occurrence. Japanese Prime Minister's decreased state of emergency for Tokyo and three other areas. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga declares a state of emergency in Tokyo, Osaka, and two other prefectures, an attempt to combat a surge in coronavirus cases three months before the Tokyo Olympics is set to open. Under the new state of emergency, which affects a quarter of Japan's population and it's set to run from April to May, the government will require restaurants, bars, and karaoke parlors serving alcohol to close and big sporting events to be held without spectators. The state of emergency will cover nearly a quarter of the population and last through the Golden Week holidays, dealing a further blow to the tourism and services industries. Japan has so far avoided an explosive spread of the pandemic that has crippled many countries. There had been a total of about 550,000 cases and 9,761 deaths, which is significantly lower than the numbers seen in other large economies. The surge in mutant variants causes shortages of medical staff and hospital beds in some areas. Myanmar activists pledged to continue the protests, although the country's junta chief and Southeast Asian leaders meet to solve a problem in Myanmar. Activists in Myanmar's larger city, Yangon, protest against an agreement between the country's junta chief and Southeast Asian leaders to end a violent post-coup crisis. Around 2,000 young protesters marched on the city streets carrying banners that denounced the agreement proctored by the ASEAN. According to the statement from the ASEAN chair Brunei, a consensus is reached in Indonesia's capital Jakarta on five points, ending violence, constructive dialogue among all parties, a special ASEAN envoy, acceptance of aid and visit by the envoy to Myanmar. The five-point consensus did not mention political prisoners, although the statement says the meeting heard calls for their release. ASEAN leaders want a commitment from Army Chief Ming Oholeng to restrain his security forces, which the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners says have killed 748 people since a civil disobedient movement erupted to challenge his February 1st coup against the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. records more than 2,000 cases of COVID-19 with 11 deaths in the last 24 hours. The, now entertainment strip in the, tourist town of Pattaya. Charities and the COVID-19 Situation Administration Center said in the last 24 hours Thailand registered more than 2,000 coronavirus cases, our domestic transmission and five were imported cases. The record high 11 fatalities are reported to have pre-existing medical conditions. An indicator of the harsh toll the pandemic takes on the working world. Thailand has confirmed a total of 55,460 cases and 140 deaths since the start of the pandemic, of which 31,113 patients have fully recovered and been released from hospitals, while 24,207 others are hospitalized. As they search for jobs in a town where there is none, there were hopes that things would get better. To contain the fast spread of the deadly virus, Bangkok Governor Aswin Kwong Mung announces that 31 public venue types, including cinemas, parks, zoos, gyms, libraries, museums and kindergarten, will be closed for the next day until May 9. Plus, gatherings with more than 20 people are forbidden and citizens are required to wear face masks in public areas. Thank you for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a nice day.